this video, I will show you how to manage large files. With VPN connections becoming more prominent, managing, or more specifically, decreasing large file sizes has never been more important. On this project example, I will show you how I have halved the file size while retaining 100% of the Revit elements and all of their data. Let's check it out. In this example, the on-screen model has been received from a consultant. At the client's request, they have modeled a lot of services. Now, I am mostly interested in the architectural portions. For my tasks, working with this all-inclusive model becomes difficult. Basically, the objective is to portion chunks of the model according to function. In Revit, this can be achieved through worksets. In order to deploy worksets, we need to enable work sharing. To do this, select the workset button and then on the work sharing enabling box, select OK. You will know work sharing is enabled when the work sets dialog appears. Now that work sharing is enabled, I should save the model. I always like to define the file name with the word central, as this indicates to those in my team that work sharing has been enabled and that therefore additional precautions should be taken. On the right hand side, pick options. These are the file save options. I can reduce the maximum number of saves to 10. Typically, I like to work around the one save per hour mark and then save the model. Now, I can start creating all of the additional work sets. But before I do that, I need to relinquish ownership by synchronizing. I can do this by clicking the sync button on my quick access tab. I also select compact model and add a comment. This is to track movements in the file history, which you can find on the collaborate tab. Next, I set editable to no. This is because I do not want exclusive ownership. If left unchanged, only one user can exclusively edit each workset at a given time. Following this, I can start creating the worksets. Here, I have named worksets according to function. I deselect visible in all views because I want to manually control this because I do not need to see services in all views. I continue adding worksets. You will notice with every new work set that I create, editable is set to yes by default, and I am labeled as the owner of the work set. I will correct this a little further ahead. First, I should finish creating all required work sets. Once the list has been defined, I should change editable to no. But before I do that, I need to relinquish ownership by synchronizing. I can now proceed with changing editability. Notice by doing this, I am no longer listed as the workset owner, meaning editability is shared with anyone working on this file. Also, notice that visible in all views is not checked for each of the services work sets. To help identify work set visibility in the model, toggle the work set graphics, which can be found on the view control bar at the bottom of the screen. First, go to the work sharing display settings, where I can differentiate work sets according to color. Once defined, you can activate this view filter by turning on 
the work sharing display. You will know this is on by the orange highlight that now surrounds the display. I can allocate Revit elements into their associated work set group. The best way to do this is to isolate like elements, select them and then on the properties palette assign them to the new work set. And as elements are grouped into their respective work set, they disappear from the active view. By default, I have determined that work sets are not visible. This will simplify the process of group allocation because as elements are assigned to a respective work set, they will no longer be visible on the screen. Keep working in this manner until no elements are visible. Works at visibility can also be managed through the visibility graphic overrides. Type VG to launch the overrides, then move across to the last tab on the right, which is work sets. This lists all of the work sets that I had previously created and each work sets visibility settings also. But I can override these settings in this case to show. At the moment, the workset display is on and so each workset group is shown in a different colour. To further demonstrate this, I will turn off the roof and ceiling categories in the visibility graphics. Furthermore, I will tile the view to display the benefits. On the left, the workset view setting is defined globally, while on the right, this global setting is overridden and the workset display graphic is on. Once finished, sync the model and compact the file. At this stage, I add a comment for history tracking. We are now ready to link this into our host file, where the work set system really becomes advantageous. The next step is to launch a new project using my template. This is where I will do the architectural works. Once that is opened, I find a view for importing links. And now I am ready to import the link. On the insert tab, click Revit link. This will launch the Revit links dialog. Select the file to be linked and set positioning to project base point. This will align both base points in the new project file. Then pick the little drop down arrow to uncover some additional settings. This will actually give us an additional control over the work sets previously created. Revit will allow us to close them, meaning elements assigned to any closed work sets will not load. This will help computer performance as the host file will be really light. Let's drill down a little deeper to see how this works. This can be done by selecting the said work sets and then clicking close on the right hand side. The link is now loaded and it seems as if all went to plan. I will switch over to 3D to confirm. And just as I had wanted, on screen we can only see the architectural work set visible.
In the visibility graphics, we can reach into the link, so to speak, and control the work sets from the host. On the far right, pick Revit links, then just under display settings, pick by host view. Then below the tab line, on the right hand side, ensure custom is selected. Then move back up to the tabs and move across to the last tab called work sets. Click this and now I am in control of the linked files work sets. Notice that some items are marked with an asterisk. These are the closed work sets and Revit notes down the bottom that these can be opened if needed through the Manage Links tool. So let's have a look at that. Move across to the Manage tab and find Manage Links. Pick the associated linked file then down the bottom, pick Manage. This opens a familiar dialog box. I first saw this when I initially linked the file into the host project. I can now simply open any work sets that I need to see. At this stage, it would be a good idea to save the file. I named this one host. With both the link and the host files set up, now is a good time to review file size. In this example, the original file size was 62 megabytes. By using the link and work set workflow, the file size has been reduced to just 10. Now let's say for some reason I need to make a change to the link. On the project browser, find Revit links down the bottom. Right click on the linked file and choose open and unload. I can now edit the link without having to open it in a second iteration of Revit. I will make a simple change for demonstration. Now that I have completed the change, I can save and close. I am now back in the host model and looking at the Revit links tab on the project browser, you can notice the link is now marked with a red cross, meaning it has been removed from the host. If I right click on the link, I can then reload this back in. Now this is all being done without closing out of the host file or opening a second iteration of Revit. Very useful tools. And here you can see the updated link. Now, in this tutorial, I have simulated receiving a linked file from a consultant. But what if the consultant updates their file? I have set up all of the work sets and so to do this all over again could be frustrating. Well, using the copy and monitor tool, I don't have to. Let's take a closer look. On the collaborate tab, select copy monitor, then select the consultant's link. Up on the ribbon, pick options then come across to the Options dialog and pick Walls. Here, Revit is asking how I would like to copy the walls. I will change these to original type because I want to use the same wall family that was used by the consultant. Then, back on the ribbon, I pick Copy and then just below on the Options bar, I pick Multiple so that I can select more than one wall. To conclude the process, I can select which walls I would like to copy. In this example, I select the walls recently 
added. Click Finish on the Options bar. As you can see, I have literally copied the selected elements from the linked model into the host file. But not only, Revit has marked the copied walls with a monitoring symbol, meaning that in future revisions of the linked file, if the monitored walls move again, Revit will notify me accordingly. Let's have a look. To demonstrate the workflow, I will unload the link. Simulating a consultant, I will then make a change and reload the revised link back into the host. As I have reloaded, Revit has detected a change in location of the monitored elements. I can now go to the coordination review on the ribbon to find out more. Here, Revit gives me a choice of four actions. I pick the last one. In essence, this moves the monitored wall in the host file to the updated location of the same wall in the linked file. Essentially, Revit has updated the host file for me. This concludes the tutorial. If you find this workflow useful, please like the video and subscribe for more Revit workflows.